What is going on YouTube? It's your boy Spanko and in today's video we're going to be discussing something that's really important in terms of dino. So if you guys are dino players or dino enjoyers like I am, this video may help you choose what variant of dino to play in this upcoming format. Whether we choose to play the True King variant with Litho back at 3 now or we play the OTK variant and I'm going to discuss all of that in today's video. But if you guys do enjoy these videos, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh content just like this one. We upload 5 days a week here on the channel but we upload a full 10 videos per week deck profiles combo videos dual replays discussions like this one all that good stuff you'll find it right here on the channel so make sure you guys subscribe to stay tuned into all of that so in today's video like i said we're going to be discussing the pros and the cons of both builds and which one i think is going to be better for today's format so with that being said let's get right into the discussion all right so to start this video i kind of want to talk about what cards we're going to expect to see in people's main decks and in people's side decks for this february 2023 format and then once we break that down we're going to go through both dino builds whether it be the true king dino build or just a more pure version of dino whether it be going first or going second the really nice thing about dino is that it can really do both so we'll get into that when we do get into that but i do want to start off by breaking down what's going to be really relevant and then using that to essentially judge which build is going to be better for today's format whether it's going to be the true king build or a pure dino build without the true king cards all right so let's start things off here with cards that you are going to for sure see in today's format whether it be in the main deck or in the side deck you guys are going to see these kind of cards and one card you guys are going to see is nightmare corruptor ibli so let's break this one down right this card is a card that puts itself onto your opponent's side of the field in this case you're the opponent so they're going to put it on your side of the field and it's going to lock you into link summoning and you're not going to be able to special summon cards as long as it's face up on your field now in dino as a whole how are some different ways we can play around this well if we're playing the true king build which is really heavily focused on going first being able to rip cards out of your opponent's extra deck and being able to combo you can imagine how this can kind of be a sticky situation if your opponent puts an ibli on your side of the field now don't get me wrong dino in general plays some pretty strong link twos you have stuff like pentastag you can play cards like lingaribo to out this card but in that case you're gonna have to take away other spots from other extra deck cards that could be there however that is an out for you you play other link twos so you can normal summon an ov raptor activate the ov raptor effect go into a link two and then this way at least you're still able to combo right so there are some ways to play around it in the true king build one really good way to play around it in a pure dino build especially a go second otk build is dark hole now i've been a big fan of raigeki in otk dinos however i will say in this format specifically i think dark hole makes a lot more sense keep in mind dark hole does synergize with the baby sarasaurus pretty well which is nice but it does get ibli off your field which means you're going to be able to break your opponent's board but then you're also going to be able to break the ibli lock and you're going to be able to push for game so in the case of ibli i'm going to give it more so to the pure dino variants or the dino otk variants because i just feel like even if you're forced to go second there are ways to play around ibli of course you still have your normal summon like you would in the true king build however at least with the go second build you have options like dark ruler now before i continue here i want to show you guys what kind of builds would look like in today's format if you were playing dino this is kind of what a true king dino build would look like you of course want to go first with this deck and then you want to be able to set up full combo set up the litho sajum here's what an otk deck would look like this is kind of just a template of what an otk deck would kind of look like same thing with the true king build and i want to show off some really powerful cards you can include cards like book of eclipse dark hole which we just mentioned ash and nibiru are really powerful in today's format so there's a lot of cards here of course going first and you're going second you're really good again so i'm going to talk about the deck build specifically later on in the video i really want to focus on these side deck cards and these cards that you might face in today's format right so here we have nibiru lava golem wing dragon or sphere mode and kaijus i'm going to group these all together because these are kind of all board breaker cards Cards. Nibiru is a little bit different because unlike these other cards, at least you have some sort of protection with Miscellaneousaurus in any dino build. But even with the Miscellaneous, keep in mind you're still only playing the one Misk, so Nibiru is still a problematic card in today's format. However, Nibiru aside, there's going to be Lava Golem, the Sphere Mode, as well as any Kaijus. I just have Gamma Seal here, but it could be any other Kaiju. And these three cards, if you're playing the True King build, which really wants to go first, and you're really going to try to set up combos, I mean the most minimalistic of combos are going to be stuff like Appaloosa plus Conductor Tyranno plus a Savage Dragon, right? That's a very minimalistic combo, but again, that gets broken by Lava Golem. That gets broken by Sphere Mode. Even a Gamma Seal could be really strong because even if your opponent just Kaijus your Apo and you have the Conductor Tyranno as well as a Savage Dragon on your side of the field, yes, you still have other disruptions, but you're still going to be losing one of your
three main cards, which is Appaloosa. And again, if your opponent has Fear Mode or Lava Golem, then the entire board essentially gets broken. So that I will say, again, the going second build, you have to worry about this a lot less. Even Nibiru, you're going to have to worry about a lot less because if your opponent does decide to use Nibiru on your turn, if they set up a board of their own, they're going to be getting rid of their own monsters, right? So I'm not so much more of afraid of the Nibiru in the go second build. With these three cards, you're not afraid of them at all in the go second build. So again, I think the go second OTK Dino build is still just a little bit better than the true king dino build based off of what we've seen so far some other cards as well that are getting really popular are the book cards you have book of eclipse book of lunar eclipse as well as book of moon these three cards are all obviously being used to combat kashtara in today's format of course they're good into other decks as well but specifically against kashtara these cards are really good if you're playing the go first true king build it's the same situation with these board breakers right here where your opponent can start their turn by activating book of eclipse even if you have a negate for it let's say you have the savage dragon now you're forced to use the savage dragon to stop the book of eclipse and if you're forced to use that savage on the book of eclipse now you don't have that other layer of protection because savage is typically your omni negate and then you have apple which is just a monster negate right so any other spell cards essentially with that board is going to be able to go through right so that's why all these book cards essentially are really good against dino especially if your opponent is going second and these cards are all going to be main decked by the way in today's format you guys are going to see these cards in the main deck but again that's not an issue you're going to face with the otk deck yes you can argue but your opponent can just set the lunar eclipse or set of book of moon and then you know if they pass their turn if they have it in their hand they can set it and pass their turn and it comes back to you keep in mind if they have eclipse specifically it's going to book of moon their own monsters as well so it's actually not that powerful but lunar eclipse and book of moon can be a problem yes but again you're playing cards like miscellaneousaurus which can help protect your dinos but you guys can say oh but spank you're playing miscellaneousaurus in the true king combos as well the thing is you're gonna need misc for a lot of your combos in that deck so if you're using the misc to combo you don't have that misc in your hand to protect you from these cards that are gonna break your kind of boards right so another thing that the go first true king build struggles with and another powerful spell card dark ruler no more again the going first true king combo variant is gonna lose to pretty hard dark ruler no more is really good into sprite really good into brandon and whatnot so this is another card that again is gonna break your board and last but not least lance I want to talk about Lancia because this card is just really good into both builds. It doesn't really matter because they're always going to be activating on your turn anyway. So if you're going first, they activate Lancia, you have a hard time playing. If you're going second, they activate Lancia, you still have a hard time playing. So Lancia is one of those cards that's absolutely insane against Dino. It doesn't matter what build you're playing. This card is absolutely insane, right? So I'm going to put this on as a tier of its own because this card on its own is just really powerful in Dino in general. But you guys can see a lot of these cards outside of the Ibli are really good against the going first build of Dino right because if you are going first and you're going to be able to set up a board then Ibli's not that good but all of these board breaker cards can be really really relevant right so i do want to say if you're looking at it from this perspective alone the otk build of dino by itself does look a lot better let's analyze the decks a little bit more and see if this is still the case right so let's go into the true king dino build and let's talk about it a little bit right now while dino in general does have some pretty good cards going second tyranno is really good going second if you're playing a card like fenrir which is really nice because it synergizes with litho pretty well this card is not bad going second you also have the scrap cards over here which are not bad going second as well but again that's all assuming it's going to resolve right but in general these cards are not bad going second and you can make that argument however i will say this all right there's two things about this deck one really good pro and one pretty bad con all right so let's talk about this this deck in general dino in general can combo without needing the litho sadrum now because litho is back at three people got really excited but if you look at a lot of people's extra decks now mine included you guys are going to see all the most important important cards there's going to be two copies of each of them because your opponent is always going to be playing around Koshtara so for that reason is Litho really that good if your opponent is going to be prepared for it anyways and in my opinion the answer is no because it doesn't really matter if you're ripping three cards out of your opponent's extra deck if those cards aren't going to be impactful in the game right so let me give you guys a quick example let's say you're playing the mirror match all right now in Dino one of the most important cards to help you combo is a scrap engine and scrap wyvern over here is very important now if I'm playing Dino I'm going to be playing two scrap wyvern because i don't want to lose to koshtara i don't want to lose to them ripping my one scrap wyvern out and then we're stuck there right so for that reason i'm going to be playing two scrap wyvern so let's say my opponent goes litho sadrum against me litho would be good in a lot of other formats where essentially i'm playing only one scrap wyvern maybe one savage dragon one dolka you know in those kind of formats this card can be really good but in a format right now where everyone is prepared for the extra deck rip then is litho really that powerful yes you can argue it helps you combo with the babies but again is that really that powerful because Dino is already made up of a bunch of two card combos. You have OV plus Babies combo, OV plus Miscus combo, 
Misk plus Baby is combo, Baby plus Arcosaur is combo. So it's kind of one of those things where it's like, if you already have a deck that combos really well, do you really need the Litho? The Litho for the Banish used to be really good. Again, I don't think it's that good in today's format. However, there is one really good pro with this deck. And that pro is the Lost World over here. Lost World is an insanely powerful card going first, especially against the Kostra format. You put a token on their side of the field. They can't target cards you control. And on top of that, they can't just special summon a Kostra for free as long as they have a token on their side of the field. So I will say Lost World is the big pro with this deck. However, again, even though it is a good pro and it's a really powerful card against Kostra, there is still the chance you don't win the die roll. Mathematically, it's going to be 50-50, but let's be honest, we've all gone to a locals and you've lost three die rolls in a row. So in that sense, it's like, hey, okay, Lost World in theory is really good, but in practicality, is it really that good, right? If I don't go first and my opponent sets up a full board, my Lost World is not going to be able to help me break their boards, right? So that's the thing with the True King build that I personally am not a fan of, at least right now, because yes, Litho is at three, but again, if everyone's prepared for Litho, aka they're prepared for the Kostra matchup, right? So if they're prepared for the Kostra matchup, they're prepared for Litho, and then Litho doesn't really matter. So let's take a look at the OTK deck and why I think the OTK deck is a lot stronger. Yes, Ibli is still a powerful card, and Ibli is probably this deck's biggest weakness. However, I will say this, again, even if you are forced to go first, you have OV Misk plays, you have OV Baby plays. If you guys have never seen the combo video, I do a lot of combo videos on my channel, so you guys can check that out. You guys will see how powerful this deck is just on its own. But if you're playing this OTK version where you want to go second, or you can at least incorporate cards that are good going second, you're not going to lose to Kostura or Branded or Sprite or any of those decks because you're going to be prepared for it. Because in this format, we're going to be playing Book of Eclipse, which is really good. Now, keep in mind, your opponent may have an Ash for the Book of Eclipse. And if you're going first, you may need to Ash the Book of Eclipse as well to protect your own board. And that's why we're also playing the Ash. Now, again, we were just talking about Ibli, but Dark Hole is a really good card against that because Dark Hole is not only going to be breaking your opponent's board, but it's going to be getting rid of the Ibli that's on your side of the field. And then funny enough, Dark Hole has some pretty good plays with Baby Sarasaurus as well. So that's just another kind of synergy that this deck has, which is kind of nice. And then you're playing cards like Imperm, which is really good against Kostura. Keep in mind, Imperm or Dark Ruler doesn't actually lock you out of your zones because that's the con with this deck, right? Your opponent is going to be able to lock you out of your zones. And that's kind of where the issue comes from, or that's where the issue with the OTK build stems. However, again, that's why we're playing so many ghost second cards so we can clear our opponent's boards clear our own zone so we don't have to get zone locked and then we're going to be able to play so some of those cards like i already mentioned were dark hole and book of eclipse imperm is one of those cards that's really good because it'll stop your opponent from even getting to that point nibiru is another card that's really good because it'll stop your opponent from getting to that point and another card that's going to stop your opponent from getting to that point is the ash blossom right like if you're opening ash imperm against the kashtara player you're pretty much winning the game they're not going to be able to play through this that well and then you're going to be able to go for a game and push for a lot of damage so again that's the thing with the otk build that i think is just really powerful and a lot better than the true king build in general and that's because you can play so much versatile cards that are really good into so many different decks we've been talking about kashtura but these cards like ash are really good into branded where you can ash the branded fusion same thing with the imperm is really good into sprite good into sword soul which is picking up in popularity same thing with dark hole you know like these cards are very good into different decks and a lot of variety and that's why i think this build of the deck is really really good because if you are forced to go first you're still able to combo it's not like this deck can't combo you can still full combo with this deck but you have these kind of cards that are going to make it so you don't lose going second on top of that you have so many different options you can play cherries cherries is a really powerful card if you have the shangri-la or the mirror jade in your extra deck you can fit these in and you cherries your opponent your opponent's really not going to be doing anything change of heart is a very powerful card in today's format harpy's feather duster as well raigeki is really good now i think dark hole is just a little bit better right now because of ibli but in general like raigeki is not a bad card so there's so many different flex spots and the really cool thing about this version of the deck is it's not really reliant on its extra deck yes you still want the scrap wyvern and again that's probably why we're going to be playing two scrap wyvern so we don't lose to something like the kashtar matchup or lose to a card like lithosajum if we're going against a true king matchup but the thing is it's like at the end of the day you're still going to be able to otk as long as you can break your opponent's board this deck does not have any trouble putting up a lot of damage so all in all, if you really want to look at the cards that are really good in today's format, what version of Dino is just better? And the answer truthfully right here is the OTK version where you can go first, you can go second, but going second, you're going to be able to OTK and going first, you're going to be able to set up combo. So I just wanted to bring that to you guys' attention. And that's where my like decision kind of is right now. If I play Dino in today's format, this is kind of how I feel like I want to be playing Dino. So that is it for today's video. I hope you guys did enjoy. Now, overall, like I said in the video, I think the OTK variant of Dino is just going to be a little bit better in today's format. Don't get me wrong, Lithosajum is such a powerful card, but in 
specifically right now where everyone is prepared for Karstara, Litho is actually just not as powerful. And a lot of the cards that people are going to be playing against Karstara overlap really well against Dino as well. So you don't really want to be playing into that because you know people are going to be prepared for it. So for that reason, I think the OTK build is the build to choose for today's format. If you guys have any suggestions or opinions, let me know in the comment section down below just in case I may have missed something. But also if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh content just like this one. We upload five days a week here on the channel, but we do a full 10 videos, five long videos, five shorts. You guys are going to get a little bit of everything. Now, I hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you guys from the bottom of my heart. I appreciate every single one of you. With that, thank you. Peace.